Today, I want to talk about Justin Fields and his solid pro day performance and all that's coming up after the bumper. Don't be cornering me. Hold up. Time. You gotta help me with that, that corner sh**. <laughs> What's up, kid folk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always college football related, sports related. We have a good time. Today, I want to talk about Justin Fields. But I want to start by saying this. Pro day is a miracle. A black man only gets so many of those. Roughly 21 million black men are Americans. Of those 21 million, about 1,200 are NFL players. That means that black men have 0.00006% of a chance of playing in the NFL. This while one in three black men will go to prison. About six, six and a half percent of the American population is black and male. Now, we know the odds. We know what waits for so many black boys if we fail, if we falter. Black men and their families who get to the NFL are working miracles. Pro Day is an opportunity to showcase that miracle again and to begin building generational wealth so that we no longer have to prove the miracle. Our bodies know this work faster, higher, stronger. The miracle I wait for is when this isn't a proved day. It's just another one. Now, to Justin Fields, who started out his pro day dropping 4.44 seconds in the 40-yard dash, which isn't as fast as the 4.41 that he ran a week ago, or two weeks ago, and isn't the 4.39 that he wanted to get to. But one, he slipped, and two, that's stupid fast, man! That's ridiculous! At, a, at, at quarterback? Are you kidding? Six foot three, 230 pounds. And then the man was out there just throwing dimes. Like, I was listening to Ace Hood's We On while Justin Fields was out there dropping dimes. And I got to tell you, it's a religious experience to be listening to We On and watching Justin Fields do what Justin Fields does best. Talk about a QB who slipped and still dropped a 4.44 in the 40. Like he ain't tossed 60 yards through the air into a shoebox labeled money. QB5 doesn't make no sense. That man rolled up on Clemson and destroyed a whole defense's confidence. All right. Now, there are people that want to point to his 12 of 27 with Two picks for 114 yards against number 14 Northwestern in the Big Ten title game. And then don't want to point to 22 of 28 for 385 with six touchdowns, one pick against number two Clemson in the playoff. Choosing to see someone at their best or at their worst is a conscious choice. And so much of this is about confirmation bias. We don't have a say on this, but we can look at the facts. The 49ers traded up to number three in this NFL draft because they believe that this group of quarterbacks is better than what they got. Okay? Jimmy Garoppolo is also one of the leaders in income or not inter interception percentage, which is ridiculous because they don't really throw passes like that. But I want to add something more to the mix here because there's so many people who want to point to Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch going to see Mac Jones on his second pro day while they sent assistant general manager Adam Peters to Justin Fields' pro day because they were taking place simultaneously. But they don't want to point to Kyle Shanahan and his father Mike are among the staff for QB Collective. March 2nd, was photo taken, put up by QB Collective, shows Justin Fields, Kyle Shanahan at a workout. All right. If you need more than that, cool, fine. Nothing is going to convince you. And you know what? I'm not trying to convince you. I'm the Justin Fields guy. I have been the Justin Fields guy. I'm rooting for a superhero because that's what these dudes are. I mean, Baron Browning out here running 4-5 in the 40 is not surprising to me because I knew that man at 220 pounds running 10.97 in the 100 meter dash. He graduated from the Xavier School for Gifted Youngsters. Like, he's like that. And that's a ton of those players. And I keep pointing to these facts because 70% of the NFL looks like me. Okay? The idea that you're going to find guys that are better than Justin Fields 
in Mac Jones, Trey Lance, Zach Wilson. Cool. It's an opinion. We all got them. And we'll see what the draft has to say about that. And then ultimately, we'll see what they do in the NFL. But I have not believed in a quarterback like I believe in Justin Fields since Baker Mayfield stepped onto campus at Oklahoma and led the Sooners to a college football playoff in 2015 since he did it again in 2017 since Kyler Murray turned down playing Major League Baseball and a contract that would have been stupid, them changing the rules so that he could be on the 40-man active roster, and then still became not just a college football playoff quarterback, not just the Heisman Trophy winner, but just the second player in the history of the sport to pass for 4,000 yards and rush for 1,000 yards. First person to do that was Deshaun Watson. I look at Justin Fields, and I see a guy who does not have any so-called character issues. I see a man whose teammates want to follow him into battle. I see a man that shows up to work. I see a quarterback who was unafraid of a 40-yard dash, and Kyler Murray didn't run it for all those folks that want to say, yeah, Kyler would have been faster. If Kyler was faster, then he would have ran. Maybe he is, but we don't know it. Lamar Jackson ran. Cam Newton ran. Kyler didn't run. Even Baker ran. It wasn't necessarily something grateful, but he graceful, but he was competitive in that way. Kyler didn't need to show. Still was the number one overall pick. Justin Fields won't be the number one overall pick. Urban Meyer has all but locked the Jags into it. It's like that is the direction that we think we're going to go with Trevor Lawrence unless there's something that really wants to stir him away. And there are a lot of people going, yeah, well, why wouldn't the Ohio State coach want the Ohio State guy? First, he didn't coach Justin. Not like that. Not really. No. Ryan Day. Right? This is Ryan Day's system. This is Ryan Day's product. And if he turns out to be the guy that I think he's going to be, It'll be in large part because Ryan Day helped it be so. So when we talk about the kid and we talk about his pro day performance and we talk about what you didn't see him do, bear in mind that these aren't necessarily questions you're asking everybody else. Zach Wilson got loose against a bunch of G5 schools and got dump trucked by Coastal Carolina. Okay. Justin Fields doesn't go through his progressions. Uh, He's a one read quarterback, whatever the hell that means. First of all, 70% of his completions, right? were due to air yards. Like 70% of his yardage was air yardage, which means that he's not throwing the ball short to athletes and watching them make plays after the catch, like, say, Trevor Lawrence. It is to say he's looking to throw the ball downfield. He's looking for the high-difficulty throw. And as he said, and I believe, I'm not going to come off of my first read to get to my fourth and my fifth read just so y'all can see that I know how to read the field. Your job as a quarterback is to get the ball to the playmakers, and there's a reason why you have a number one, because that is the best playmaker for this play. So if you throw a bunch of passes to Chris Olave and Garrett Wilson and don't throw a bunch of passes to Luke Farrell and Jeremy Ruckert, what does it matter? I believe Justin Fields is the best quarterback in this draft. You might believe it's Trevor Lawrence. You might believe it's Zach Wilson. Hell, you might believe it's Mac Jones. But none of them ran 4.44 seconds in the 40-yard dash. None of them has been through what Justin Fields has gone through. Transferred from Georgia to Ohio State. Still won the job. Still went 20-2. and Won two Big Ten championships. Made two college football playoff appearances and one national championship appearance. Two years. Give me Justin Fields. You can keep the field. Deuces.